Hello, I'm Victoria Williams and today I'm going to teach you how to write a canon using MuseScore. To write a canon you first need to choose how long your leader is going to be and then decide which chords you're going to use uh, for each of those bars. I've decided to create a leader of two bars and I'm going to have four different chords in each bar. I've written out the chords that I'd like to use on this little post-it note here. Um, I, I'm going to use a different chord for each beat of the bar, but you don't need to. You could use um, in a 4-4 four, four bar, for example, you could have just two chords or even just one. Um, you can experiment. But as I said, I'm going to use four different chords in each of my two bars. I've chosen D minor, G minor, F major, B flat major for the first bar. And the second bar is going to be E flat major, A7, G minor and D minor. My piece is going to be in D minor and I've introduced the chord of E flat which isn't really part of the, the key of D minor but I think it might sound quite nice. I've also written out the notes that each chord is made up of and this is just because it's it's uh, a reference for when we actually pick our melody notes. It's much easier just to look and see rather than have to think each time what, what notes are in that chord. So it's just to help you out really. So these are my chords and the notes that I'm going to pick from. The next thing I'm going to do is create a new file. File, new, put in a title and then pick some instruments and I like the sound of a flute and an oboe and it's a good idea to have a bass instrument for contrast with the higher pitched instruments so I'm going to add a bassoon as well and click on next as I said my key signature over here is D minor so I'm going to use the one flat key signature and my time signature that I picked was 4-4 which is already set up here but you could change the time signature if you wanted something different and click on finish. We've now got our empty score waiting for our cannon to appear. Quite simply all I'm going to do is pick a note from the available chord notes out of my plan. So the first note can be D, F or A. I'm going to pick an A. I don't really want that A. I'm going to put it up an octave by pre uh, pressing control and up arrow to a higher A because that sounds nicer on the flute, that's the only reason why. Um, the next note, these are all going to be um, note values that are a, a crotchet or quarter note because I've got four chords in the bar and it's a 4-4 four, four bar. So the next note I'm going to choose from G, B flat or D and it's generally better, you get a more pleasant melody. If you pick notes which are close to each other, they can be the same notes, they can be one scale step away or a third away, a fourth away maybe, but the closer the better for a smoother melody. So here I've got G, B flat, D, I think I'll go up to B flat. And the next chord I can choose from F, A or C, I think I'll choose a C. And B flat, D, F, D, okay. In the next bar, um, I've got E flat, G, and B flat to choose from. Um, maybe I'll go down to the B flat. I could have gone to E flat, it doesn't really matter. I'm not even listening to this in my head. You don't really need to know what it sounds like at this stage, even. A7, A, C sharp, E, or G. A is close to B flat, so I'll use that. G, B flat or D, B flat, and D, F or A for the final note. That's the first two bars. For the next two bars, I'm going back to the first group of notes. And this time, I'm going to pick one of the chord notes which I didn't choose the first time round. And this is very important because if you choose the same note, you won't create any harmony. You have to choose a different note from the chord in order for the harmony to be created once the second part starts, and that'll be the oboe in our case. So on the first time round I chose an A, 
so I could go for a D or an F this time. Um, I want a note which is close to the A, so I'm going to go for the F. Same thing for the next note, so I used a B flat before, so I could use a G this time. I used a C for the F chord, so now I can use F or A. And for the B flat chord, I used a D, so I could use a B flat or an F. I'm going to use an F. I'm not going to use the B flat because if you always choose the next scale step, then you write a scale, and a scale is not really a tune. Um, so it's a, a good tune is usually built out of little bits of scale, so a few scale steps in runs, but not constantly using them all the way through. So that's why I've picked an F there. Um, so we're going on to the next bar, E flat, G or B flat. I've used a B flat, so I've got the choice of E flat or G. I'm going to go for E flat. When I type E, I get an E natural because there's no E flat in this key, key signature. So I'll just click on the flat symbol on the toolbar and that makes an E flat for me. Uh, in the next chord, A7, I used an A, so I can go for C-sharp, E or G. <clears throat> I'm going to go for a G. Actually, I've changed my mind. I'm going to go for a C-sharp. And I'll tell you why I did that, because in the next chord, um, which is... G minor, I've got the choice of, uh, because I've used a B flat already, I've got the choice of G or D, and C leads on to D very nicely because it, it's the leading note, C sharp is the leading note, it leads to D, which is the tonic note. Um, I've changed my note value somehow, there we go. <clears throat> and in the final chord, I've used an A. So I can use an F or a D. I'm going to use another D. We've now done four bars. To make bars five and six, we'll do exactly the same thing. But this time, there's very little choice because we're going to pick the note which we didn't use um, for the most part, unless something really horrible happens and we need to change something. So um, in the first bar, I used an A. In bar 3 I used an F, A and an F, so I need to use a D here. In the second I've used B flat and G, so I need a D. In the third I've used a C and an A, so I need an F. And in the fourth I've used a D and an F, so I need a B flat. And in the next bar, I've used a B flat and an E flat, which means I need a G. In the next A7 chord, I've used an A and a C sharp. So I could repeat the G. The G is the seventh because it's seven notes higher than A. And in the next chord, I've used the B flat and the D, which means I've got another G. And in the fourth chord, I've used an A and a D, so I need an F. Now, all of the chords which we planned um, have been placed somewhere in that canon. When the parts overlap, all of these chords will be created. Um, I'm going to add two more bars because an eight bar composition is more balanced than a six bar composition. And this is just because we've, we've, music is about doubling of phrases quite often. We've got a two bar leader. We double that and it becomes a four bar phrase. We double that and we get an eight bar phrase. So it just, it has a more finished feel to it with eight bars. And to make the last two bars, I'm just going to pick notes um, from my chords here that are close to each other without worrying about which notes I've already used because I've, I've used almost everything anyway. The only one that I haven't used I think is the A from this A7 chord. 
Anyway, so we will start from the first chord again, D, F or A. Um, maybe F. G, B flat or D. G, F, A or C. A. B flat, D or F. F. Um, <clears throat> Okay, now I've just noticed, and this does happen, that I've just picked the same notes as in bar three, just by chance. Which is okay, there's no reason why not, but it would be a bit more interesting if I didn't. So I'm just going to control Z to get rid of them and try something else. So how about a D? D... G, F, D, okay, and then that's an E natural, so we'll make that E flat, and G here, G, <coughs> and D. Okay, now we've got our eight bars finished. We're going to make a bit more variety in the rhythm and the tune by splitting some of these crotchets quarter notes up into notes of half the value to make the, the rhythm a bit more interesting. And we're going to look for places where the melody drew, moves by a third. So you can see here, um, for example, the D, which is in the space, and the B flat, which is in the space. This means they're a third apart. Here, there's a note on a line followed by a note on the next line. They're a third apart. Here's another two. These are both in spaces, so they're a third apart. When this happens, what we can do is click on the first, choose the note value which is half the amount, and then click on the rest, which has appeared, and insert the note between the other two which is C in this case. I'm going to look for other places, so I've got another another one here and another one here and another one here. I think I'll put this one here, one in. We don't need to do all of them at all. Here and there is the, the logic. I'll stick one in, another D in there. One in here. here, B flat down to A, I think I'll leave that one there, and one here from this, <coughs> E flat F, okay and I'm going to hit play, press the space bar to see what it sounds like. We've now written everything that we need to. All we need to do now is copy and paste. We're going to click on the first note, find the end, which is the D here, in bar 8. Then if we press shift, hold down shift, and click on the last note, and all of the notes are selected in blue. And then press control C, and everything is copied onto the clipboard. And we're going to paste it first of all into the flute part to make a composition that's twice as long because at the moment it's, it's just too short. Canons have to be repeated several times so that you get to hear all the parts at the same time. So we will click on the first empty bar and press Control V so that the composition has now just been doubled with exactly the same notes. And now I'm going to copy everything again, click on the first note find the end, hold down shift, click, control and C, and now I've copied everything, all 16 bars, and I'm going to paste it into the oboe part in the right place. The right place depends on how many bars you planned in your leader. I planned two bars, 
that means I need to wait two bars and start in the third bar. So I click and then press Ctrl and V and that pops in there. Fine. And then for the bassoon part I need to wait two bars for the flute and then I have to wait another two bars for the oboe and the bassoon part will start here in bar five and I need to bring everything down because these notes are very very high it's the same pitch as the flute note um, I press control and the down arrow and maybe twice to bring the notes down into the right octave now at the end we can see that the flute part finishes here on bar um, 12, 13, 16 the oboe part however finishes on bar 18 and the bassoon part of course finishes on bar 20 never mind that's how Catlin's work so in the middle we've got a section where everybody's playing or singing if you're doing voices um, starting from bar 4 and I'm going to put a repeat bar um, you can find the bar lines here on the left palettes we've got a list of bar lines you click on the arrow to show them and this one is called start repeat you need to click and hold drag and then let go of it in the right bar and it places the bar line in all the different parts then we need to find the end section in bar 16 this is the last bar where everybody's playing together and put an end repeat which has the dots on the other side and that's our cannon finished all you need to do now is to press the space bar to hear what it sounds like <laughs>